Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. Well, I've had far too much coffee. However, in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to prototype in Adobe XD. So let's get started. So you can see on screen, we have several artboards, all with their own design. These designs come directly from the Adobe XD tutorial, and you can access this from the welcome screen by selecting begin tutorial. So I've just pulled these together into a separate file, and we're going to link these together in a prototype. So what is a prototype and why might you want to create one? Well, prototyping is an excellent way for you to take your designs, whether that's for an app or a website, and link all of your screens together and get as close as you can to creating a working product. And this prototype is something that you can then put into the hands of your clients, your user testers, even yourself, and you can get invaluable feedback that is going to help you make your product better and better before you commit the time and the cost involved to having the actual product developed. So essentially a great way to get feedback earlier in the process, make the product better before you commit that time and cost to actually building the thing. So at the moment we're on design view and we can switch over to prototype view at the top and you'll see it removes some of the design tools on the left and right. Essentially the more creative part of the process is over and now we're going to link these screens together into a working prototype. So first thing we need to pick a home screen. Now by default Adobe XD will take your first artboard and label that as your home screen with the blue home tag here. You can of course select a different artboard and set your home screen. However, I think it makes sense that we leave the screen labeled home as the home screen. That just, that just makes sense to me. Maybe it's just me. And what we're going to do is just zoom in a bit. And you can click on the individual objects on your artboard and you'll see this little blue tag with an arrow appear next to it. And we can left click this, drag this out and let go and it will link to that artboard. So when a user clicks on this circle here, it will link them to this artboard. And you can see the target is set as blog, so that's the link we created. We can select another one. We can also set the transition, so you could have an instant transition with none, dissolve, you can have it slide or push, so we'll go with push left. You can set the easing, so whether it eases in to the transition or eases out of it, or in out, or none at all. And you can set the time, so 0.4 seconds is pretty typical for a sliding animation. And when you're happy with the settings, just click anywhere off that and that dialog box will go. And if you'd like to access that link again, you can click on the artboard and it will show you all of your links. And you can also just click on this end point here and it will bring up the settings for that specific transition. And if you'd like to remove it, you want to get rid of this altogether, just click and drag into this empty gray space around your artboards, let go, and it will remove that transition altogether. So we have our home screen here and we have a blog screen. Well, we're going to link this button here. Now, of course, we don't want to just link the blog text. If we click on that, we have a blue tag with an arrow there, and we also have one for the rectangle. So the first thing to do is left click on the rectangle, hold shift, and left click on the our blog text. These are now both selected, and we can go up to object and group. Now we've grouped the text and the rectangle together. You can see we can move them around. What we can do now is we can now drag from the right hand side and because they're grouped they will be one object so we can let go it remembers those settings from before and if we go to play in the top right corner it will bring up this preview here and we can now click on the our blog button and it will slide and there is that push left transition that we set Let's just do that again. So the whole button is clickable, not just the text. Fantastic, okay. So we can see that link is still there. Now we're going to link from the blog back to the home screen. And we have a back arrow at the top here, so we can click the back arrow. And we're going to do the same thing again, just left click on that blue tag with the arrow, drag left, and just hover over this artboard, doesn't matter where, and let go and it remembers those same settings before. Now we could have previous artboard selected if we want, or we can link to the home. So let's go for a previous artboard because essentially this is a back arrow. So what it will do, and it says here, targeting a previous artboard automatically reverses the last transition used. So we could set that as home and control this if we wanted a different transition, but I think it makes sense just to leave that at previous artboard and it will reverse the transition. So if we go ahead and click play, 
we can click our blog. It takes us through to the blog and we can then go back. Fantastic, okay. So we're going to add a few more now. So we have a gear guide over here. You can see that this is the featured piece of content at the top. Now we've got lots of different bits of text and a background image. So as we did before, we're going to drag over all of this or use shift to select multiple items, go to object and group this together. This whole top area, we want this to be clickable. And we're going to left click and drag this out. And we're going to leave the same settings set up there. And again, with the back arrow, we're going to link back and we'll just set previous artboard. So we're using very similar transitions as we go from one screen to the next. And we've got our last screen here. So what have we got now? We've got the adventure, so finding beauty in the badlands. So this is a content post here. So we're not going to be linking from this screen and this is already grouped together. So that's fantastic. So we can click on this article here and left click and drag and we're going to skip this artboard and go all the way over to this one at the end and let go. Now we've got push left again. And we, again, we can set that back arrow to link back to this artboard. Or we could just go and set previous artboard. And we'll do the same again here. Just have those all set up. So those back arrows all function in the same way. So we can click play from the top right corner and we can test our prototype. If you'd like to record your prototype session of you clicking around, you can select record up here and it will record everything you do within this small screen. And it will then ask you to save that as a video file so you can actually demonstrate to someone you using the prototype. So we'll go our blog. We can then go to the gear guide at the top. We can go back from the gear guide. We can then go into the latest adventure post here it takes us to that we can go back and we can then go back again so it takes us back to the home screen and the great thing about xd is that you can go from prototype to design and just keep switching back and forth so you can start a design you can turn it into a prototype you can then get some feedback you can go back and evolve the design and then update the prototype and once you've finished your prototype and you'd like to share it, you can go to this little share icon in the top right corner, give your prototype a name. You can add a thumbnail if you like, choose whether to allow comments or not, and then go create link. And Adobe XD will generate a share link that you can then give to someone and they can then go and view your prototype. And that link is here. And you can then select copy link and send that out to someone. They can then view your prototype and comment on it if you've allowed comments. If you go back and make changes to your design, update your prototype, and you'd like to update this link, all you do is go share again and just select update link. So they can keep viewing that same link and you can just update the link and they can see the latest version of your prototype. And there we go. That's how to prototype in Adobe XD. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.